What's up guys, it's Masked Up Swede right now I'm checking out the battle for Barnet 9th Street versus NW4 But yeah, I know about 9th Street, I think Stumbling over my words, say 9th Street though But yeah, I think 9th Street is like, is that those Like R R C O Muna and those guys? I'm not sure, man. I guess we'll see. But yeah, also, I just made a Discord, man. Link's in the description. Go join that if you want to chat, if you want to request videos for me to react to as well. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go. London Borough of Barnet is located within the <laughs> northwest of London. Okay, northwest. Yeah, I could figure by NW4, but... Barnet has actually been rated within the top 10 safest London borough. Oh, top 10 safest. We don't see that much. Usually it shows that it's top 10 most dangerous, but okay. In 2023, the crime rate within Barnet was 91 crimes per 1,000 people. Barnet's crime rate actually comes in 13% lower than London's as a whole. The London, London borough of Barnet... But that probably just means that the bigger parts of Barnet might be a bit safer, but there's probably bad parts as well, just a bit smaller. I'm, I'm guessing. It is also home to around 395,000 residents. However, what a lot of... It's so much people in London, man. Just so weird to me, like, because, like, I think there's around 10 million people in London, which is what there is in the whole of Sweden. So it's kind of mad for me to like think of yeah just London in general man <laughs> a lot of people are unaware of is the ongoing gang war between two gangs within the London borough of Barnet these two gangs being 9th street and 3BP or 4B which stands for 300 blocks plus this beef gangs being 9th street and 3BP 9th street and 3BP okay or 4B, which stands for 300 blocks plus. This beef doesn't really get attention, with the beef getting dangerous, resulting in people involved on both sides of the war falling victim to the streets. Now, 9th Street is a large street gang based around the Graham Park estate in Collindale, NW9. The blocks look so bad, man. A lot of these blocks, man, it... Yeah. I mean, obviously, Sweden has, like, bad parts as well, but, yeah, that looks so dead man local residents of the area often refer to the estate that the gang is based on as g block and brown block whilst the main gang based around the graham park estate is 9th street there has historically been multiple different gangs on the estate around the 1990s the most notable of these include tf or thug farm 300 blocks plus or 3bp and 9th street which has become a new set in recent years now one of the main reasons that 9th street would begin to beef surrounding gangs would be due to other they beef Mozart as well. Kingsbury, Goldborn. Gang members coming to the Graham Park estate in order to sell drugs in the 1990s. During this time, the most notable gang on the estate was TF, or Thug Farm, who would gain a very feared reputation after three members of TF would shoot dead a police officer in Bradford following an armed robbery. Um, RIP, man. Not gonna lie. ...by the gang. However, it would be around the mid-2000s that a new gang would be formed on the Graham Park estate. This gang would be referred to as 3BP, or 300 Blocks Plus. This gang would have a wide membership, with them recruiting young members from surrounding postcodes like NW4 and NW7. 3BP actually had a lot of affiliation throughout London, with them being affiliated with SUK and Stone... SUK? ...we actually had a lot of affiliation throughout London, with them being affiliated with SUK... SUK and you're showing 37. But yeah, maybe that's their old name. I don't know, man. K and Stonebridge. It would Stonebridge as well. Be around the early 2010s that the 3BP gang would break down. With K and Stonebridge. It would be around the early 2010s that. That troops. Like the Arsenal guy. 
It looks like him a lot, man. The 3BP gang would break down, with many members of the gang serving long sentences and jumping off road. Internal disputes would also start to occur within the gang, with many members of the 3BP gang moving their territory to nearby Hendon, as they had started beefing with other 3BP members on the Graham Park estate, and it would be the members that remained in the Graham Park estate that would start to go by 9th Street, beefing their old friends. The 9th Street gang is affiliated with... It's every single beef beefing old friends. That's what it looks like, man. I don't know how many of these videos I've reacted to by now, but it feels like every single video they say they beef old friends. Like, yeah, it's nuts, man. That would start to go by 9th Street, beefing their old friends. The 9th Street gang is affiliated with CGM and SSK. Oh, they're affiliated with CGM. And South Kilburn as well. Okay. I mean, South Kilburn does beef Mozart, right? So it kind of makes sense that way. The gang has beef with 3BP, Church Road, and Wood Green. Holy. Okay, Church Road, Wood Green, and Hendon. Okay. Prominent members of 9th Street include YB, BZ, and YS. Oh, it's BC. He's 9th Street. Who's the first guy he said? Church Road and Wood Green. Prominent members of 9th Street include YB. YB. I don't know. BZ. I know about BZ though. He's cold, man. And YS. However, we can't talk about 9th Street without talking about their opposition. Now, 3BP or 300 Blocks Plus are a small street gang mainly based around the Hendon area within the NW4 postcode. In recent years, the 3BP gang would also go by 4B or 4 Boys and 4 Block. However, for simplicity's sake, I'll refer to them as 4BP. Originally, the 3BP gang was based around the Graham Park estate, which has become 9th Street's main territory. In recent years, however, the 4BP gang has become most prominent around the Hendon area, NW4. The gang Gang also often reps the color red, just like nearby rivals 9th Street do. 4BP's main rivals include. Wait, so both of them rep red. Okay. So often reps the color red, just like nearby rivals 9th Street do. 4BP's main rivals include Finchley and 9th Street. Finchley, I don't know about that. With these rivalries getting extremely dangerous, resulting in shootings, stabbings, kidnappings, and murders going on within the streets of Barnet. But you may be confused as to why these two street gangs have a deadly rivalry with each other. Now, originally both gangs 9th Street and 4BP would actually be affiliated and would share the same beefs and alliances, with both of these gangs originally being referred to as 4BP. However, this would all change around the early 2010s, when members of the 4BP gang would begin to beef each other, this causing a massive in house divide within the gang. This in house beef was due to certain members in the gang snitching on other members, resulting in most of the older generation of 4BP being. That's a lot of times you see that, man members in the gang snitching on other members, resulting in most of the older generation of 4BP being locked up serving long prison sentences. Due to this beef, a group of members within the 4BP gang would actually move their territory towards nearby Hendon within the NW4 postcode, with them continuing to use the 4BP name. However, they also started to go by 3BP or 4B. The members that remained in the Graham Park estate would drop the original 3BP gang and would start to go by a new name, this being 9th Street. It would be following the formation of the 9th Street gang that the two Two sides 3BP and 9th Street would begin to have a deadly rivalry, which is crazy as these guys actually used to be friends. The beef would actually get extreme in 2016, with a deadly stabbing and a double murder taking place all within a few months. It would be around the beginning of 2016 that members of 4BP would ride out onto 9th Street. There's a lot resting on Birmingham's shoulders. Damn commercials, man. Just skip this, man. <laughs> if you're watching, you can obviously just skip forward. Yeah, yeah. Territory, the members would spot a 9th Street or GP member known as Presha Dan. An altercation would take place and would result in the 3BP members stabbing Presha Dan around 25 times all over his body. The attackers would flee following the stabbing, with witnesses even stating that Presha Dan's body was lifeless, with it even being thought that Presha Dan was dead. However, when paramedics would arrive on the scene, they would rush Presha Dan to hospital where he would luckily survive the attack, making a recovery, and leaving wow. the hospital weeks later, following his release. Um, surviving 25 or 27 stab wounds. Yeah, that's crazy, man.
release from the hospital, Presha Dan would actually be arrested and charged for drug offenses. He would be sentenced for the drug charge and would be released from prison months later. It would be following his release from prison that Presha Dan would begin to track down his alleged attacker, being a member of 4BP known as Minnie. Presha Dan would actually get the drop on Minnie's home address. Presha Dan would travel to Minnie's home address within the Mill Hill area. He would then shoot into the house multiple times, however no one would be hit. And following this attack, Minnie and his family would actually move to Finchley, which now meant Minnie was living on one of his op blocks. De oh, damn. So it moved to an op block. That's a crazy man. Minnie and his family would actually move to Finchley, which now meant Minnie was living on one of his op blocks. Despite this move, Presha Dan would still seek revenge and would get the drop on Minnie's family home once again. And it would be on the 15th of September 2016 that Presha Dan would travel to the house with a gun. He would even climb through an open window. Once he managed to get into the home, he would walk to a room in which Minnie's nephew, Berville Ekofo, was sleeping. Presha Dan would then aim his handgun toward the back of his head, shooting him once in the head whilst he was sleeping. That sounds like a fucking movie, man. Climbing in there and executing someone. Damn. Presha Dan wouldn't stop there and would walk down the stairs where he would encounter Minnie's mum, who had awoken after hearing the gunshot. Presha Dan would then shoot her multiple times. Sadly, both Minnie's mum and cousin would be pronounced dead on the scene. With a Damn, that's dark, man. He killed his mum and his... Yeah, cousin or nephew, he switched it up, but yeah, that's nuts, man. R.I.P. to both of them. Would then shoot her multiple times. Sadly, both Minnie's mum and cousin would be pronounced dead on the scene, with a murder investigation being launched following this. Presha Dan's DNA would be found within the car he used to flee the murders, as well as that. Gun residue would also be found within the car. It would be following this that Presha Dan would be arrested and charged for the double murder. The jury couldn't come to a guilty decision in 2018 and 19, so a fourth trial would take place, and Presha Dan would be found guilty with him being sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 40 years. This just... That might be the biggest sentence I've heard in the UK. 40 years minimum. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of deserved though. Not gonna lie, man. Being one of the many examples that someone not involved in the rivalry would sadly fall victim to the streets. Rest in peace, Berville Akofo and Annie Akofo. Following the double murder of Minnie's right, mom and cousin, it was even alleged that Minnie would get back and kill a 9th Street member's mom. However, this isn't confirmed. the war between the gangs would heaten up again with a Rainer's Lane member known as Spar It feels like it's... So is it gangs like all over London involved in this? I feel like it was Rainer's Lane. Yeah, that might be west, right? So it might be close anyway. Even being killed by 9th Street members in 2017. However, since then, both 9th Street members and Rainer's Lane members would bless the beef and would become somewhat affiliated. Rest in peace, Sparks. It would R.I.P. man. Be around 2017 and 2018 that members of 9th Street would actually begin to release music on channels like Press Play Media and Mixtape Madness. These songs would begin to gain loads of attention with a member of 9th Street known as YB who would drop a song titled Don't Make Sense. This song would blow up and currently sits on around 6 million views. YB would then drop another song titled Ride On Me which would also do numbers currently sitting on around 2.8 million. So I'm... I'm, I'd, I just don't recognize him. I'd probably recognize the songs, but I don't recognize him. Because there's no way I haven't heard the songs when they've been that big, man. Million views. This just showing the amount of potential that YB had from young. However, even though he was getting millions of views, he would still be active in the streets, often catching his rival members from 4B, with a video from this time even emerging showing YB chasing an op from 4B known as Ash, with YB even stealing his beanie and recording with it after. I come in the shop. I come, I come. Come and get your hat, rude boy. Fucking pussy. <laughs> Come and get your hat, pussy, you bitch bro. niggas. It would also be following this that YB would find himself caught up in a case with him dodging a 30-year sentence on the. Um, 
30. 7th of November 2018, YB and a friend would attempt to rob a group of alleged trappers. YB would demand one of the members hand his drug line phone to him. However, when this man would refuse, YB would retrieve a flick knife and would stab the man multiple times. Following this attack, YB and his co-defendant would flee. They would be seen on CCTV running. However, only hours later, both members would be arrested. Originally, YB would be told that the man he stabbed had actually died. However, the man would actually be alive and would recover after the stabbing. YB would be charged charged with GBH or grievous bodily harm, and in April 2019, YB would be handed a seven-year sentence for the stabbing. Since oh, um. then, YB has actually been released from prison and has started releasing music, with him even making a TikTok about the stabbing debunking popular misconceptions. Following this attack, the war between 9th Street and 4BP would continue, with multiple stabbings and shootings occurring. However, a lot of these incidents are actually unknown, with the news not really reporting on them, but instead they are spoken about within songs released by both sides. It would be around 2020 that the beef would heat up once again, with two people falling victim to the rivalry between both sides, and the news starting to report on the beef, this then resulting in key members of both gangs being locked up serving serious time. It would be around 2019 and 2020 that a member of 9th Street would begin to gain attention within the streets, this member being known as YS. YS would drop a song titled Hold It Down in November 2019. This song I don't recognize him either, man. <laughs> I don't know. Would gain a lot of attention within the underground UK drill scene, sitting on around 900,000 views. And later in May 2020, YS would feature on a lightwork freestyle with T Blacks, with this song currently sitting on around 378,000 views. If anything, it was clear that YS had potential. However, it would be on the 29th of February 2020 that YS would find himself facing life in prison, and an innocent man would fall victim to an ongoing war that he had no involvement with. On the night of the 29th of February 2020, a rail worker known as a Asante Campbell would leave his home for a night shift. Before this, he would kiss his fiance and his child goodnight before he would go to work. Before Asante Campbell would go to work, he would travel to an estate within the Hendon area in order to meet up with a colleague before work. Asante would arrive on the estate and would be waiting in his Volkswagen Polo. It would be a few minutes later that a member of 9th Street known as YS and his twin brother would approach Asante. YS would seemingly act confrontational and would mistake Asante as a rival from the 4BP gang. YS and his twin brother would approach the car window. YS would then retrieve a knife he had on him the time and would stab Asante through the car window, with his twin brother cheering him on in the process. The knife actually went through Asante's chest. However, despite this injury, Asante would make an attempt to flee with him driving away, crashing into another car before losing consciousness. The attackers would flee following the stabbing, with police and paramedics arriving moments later. However, despite the attempts paramedics made to save Asante Campbell, he would sadly be pronounced dead only moments later. With All right, be man. Like, stuff like this pisses me off, man, I'm not gonna lie. When innocent people get, yeah, especially killed as well, like, and, uh, that's mad, like. With a murder investigation being launched shortly after, this investigation would see the arrests of YS and his twin brother Kofi Abusa. During the trial, YS would actually deflect the blame onto his twin brother, with YS blaming his twin brother for the murder. However, What the hell? You're trying to blame your own brother, man. That's some... That's some weirdo stuff, I'm not gonna lie, man. YS would actually deflect the blame onto his twin brother, with YS blaming his twin brother for the murder. However, it would be in the end that both YS and his twin brother would be found guilty of the murder. YS would be found guilty of the murder and would be sentenced to a... Damn it, man. Another commercial. Minimum of 19 years, with his twin brother also being given 19 years for the murder of a. Oh, damn, they got the same sentence as well. Yeah, man. Asante Campbell. One of the saddest things about this case is the fact that Asante Campbell was not involved in any of the beef and was a civilian that had built himself. Yeah, like when guys do stuff like this, like I can't be saying, like, oh, free him, free him. Like, ah, oh, man, you deserve to be in there, man are also being given 19 years for the murder of Asante Campbell. One of the saddest things about this case is the fact that Asante Campbell was not involved in any of the beef and was a civilian that had built himself a family, having a fiancé and baby daughter. This just being another instance of pointless knife violence within the streets. Rest in peace, Asante Campbell. It would be following the death of Asante Campbell that police would begin to monitor both gangs, this then resulting in prominent members being arrested, with the younger members of each gang still continuing the war within the streets. And it would be in the same year that 
Asante Campbell was killed, that four BP members would kill a 9th Street affiliate, with this instance also being a case of mistaken identity, this murder taking place on the 5th of September 2020. On the 5th of September 2020, a local to the Graham Park estate known as Lizzie Locally would be walking home from work in the evening. However, what Lizzie wasn't aware of was that four BP members would be on the lurk, looking to kill. There would be eight members of the four BP gang and two taxis. These members would spot Lizzie and would drive up to him. The members would start to confront Lizzie, and when Lizzie would turn around and attempt to run, the members would stab him multiple times all over the body, with him sustaining around 10 stab wounds. The attackers would all flee in taxis, with police and emergency services arriving on the scene moments later. However, despite the attempts of paramedics, Lizzie would sadly be pronounced dead a few RIP man. Two hours later, with yet another murder investigation being launched. This investigation would see the arrests of three 4BP members, with all of these members being sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 years, 17 years, and 18 years. During the trial, the court actually heard that Lizzie wasn't involved in the beef, with it being thought he actually had friends involved in the rivalry, with 9th Street members often on. Uh, it's guys like this, like, you, you live in that area, which I'm guessing it's a bad area. You try to do like you try to do it the right way, like get legit money and that, and then because your friends are involved, you get killed. Like yeah, that's so dark, man. Honoring him within their music. Rest in peace, Lizzie. It would be following the death of Lizzie that 9th Street members would actually begin to gain attention within the UK drill scene. In 2021, a member of that's the guys I was thinking of. Members would actually begin to gain attention within R said oh Mona and Sos. Yeah. In the UK drill scene, in 2021, a member of 9th Street known as Beezy would begin to drop songs consistently, dropping a song titled African Boy in May 2021, with this song gaining a good amount of attention, currently sitting on around 415,000 views. Following this, other members would also get very popular, with members like GU, YB, and Beezy dropping UK drill bangers around 2021 and 2022. It would also be around 2022 that YB would be fresh home following his stabbing case in 2018, with him dropping dropping a song titled Snapback following his release. Now, the beef has continued in the streets since 2021, with stabbings and shootings still occurring. However, most of the members within these gangs have either jumped off road or gone to jail, this leading to the beef quietening down in recent years. Whilst the beef between 9th Street and 4BP became very deadly, the only people that became victim to the gangs were civilians who had nothing to do with the rivalry. If you have learned anything from this video, Make sure to stay away from the roads, as this life only ever leads to death in jail, with the road life never really leading to anything positive. Yeah, definitely, man. Stay out of the roads, man. But... Yeah, unfortunately, we got proof here as well that not even that's gonna save you sometimes. Like, if you live in that area, obviously you're gonna have some friends that are involved, which can make you a target as well. So... Yeah, man. It's a sad reality, man. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.